Welcome to the August edition of Northeast Journal. I'm your host, Joe Cullen. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll learn about a couple of exciting projects the White Bear Lake Area Historical Society has been involved in. We'll visit a new event center on White Bear Lake, and we'll get a preview of Heritage Days in Vadnais Heights. All that and more is straight ahead on Northeast Journal. and welcome to the August edition of Northeast Journal. I'm your host, Joe Cullen. Every month on Northeast Journal, we give you an inside look at the people and places that make up the Northeast section of the Twin Cities. The historic White Bear Town Hall moved to Polar Lakes Park in White Bear Township in late 2015. Over these last couple of years, extensive restoration efforts have taken place to bring the building back to how it looked in the late 1800s. We recently watched as some work was done on the building with some unique tools. The Town Hall, Wiper Town Hall project continues on and on and on. Um, much like the, the history that goes back deeply, the, the evolution of the building is, is always an ongoing process for us. One of the few photographs we have from 1914 actually shows shutters covering the windows. So that was one of our goals was to get those put back and so uh, we replicated, they've, they've disappeared over the years, but as they've decayed and, and been um, coming apart, they've taken them off and, and not been replaced. So this project is actually focused specifically on getting them rebuilt and, and put back on, which is kind of exciting. It's a neat partnership. So it's Northern um, Bedrock Historic Preservation Corps, which is a, um, a group that is basically coming out much like the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps, or the Works Progress Administration projects that happened in the 30s and 40s. Um, it puts young professionals or young um, adults to work for projects that need to be done for the for the kind of the greater good, the, the community public projects, and they are able to learn those trades and those skills that are needed to get that training to go forward and, and work in the professional field. And it's frankly a lost art for a lot of these things. So it's nice to be able to do that too and provide an opportunity. The goal for them is to learn sort of the, the historic preservation trade. So they are using the old methods, the old tools, the old mechanisms. And so the goal is to make it as accurate as possible. With me now to talk more about the Town Hall restoration, as well as a time capsule that was recently opened, is the Executive Director of the White Bear Lake Area Historical Society, Sarah Hansen. And Sarah, I want to thank you so much for coming back to Northeast Journal. Absolutely. No, it's a you've pleasure. You've been on here uh, many times in the past, and actually our viewers just saw you um, <laughs> in the story that aired right before this mm -hmm. interview, talking about some of those restoration efforts that just happened recently at the uh, Old Town Hall. Can you? Kind of tell us a little bit more about that and um, your, your thoughts now that that little period is done. We're incredibly excited. It, it, sometimes projects go on for a little while and it, they're sort of dormant or don't, don't feel like they're making a lot of progress. And right now things are starting to really take shape, which is exciting. Um, <clears throat> with the outside basically finished, once the shutters are completely up, we are headed on to the inside, which is the part that I like. Um, I didn't necessarily go to college to do building restoration, even um, though that's part of history, but I like exhibits, I like telling the stories, I like sharing the information, and that's what's gonna be happening inside. So we're getting the walls up, getting the uh, electrical put in and, and all that good stuff, and uh, should be ready to go in the relatively near future. I know it had been a while since I had been out there, and um, I was amazed even just kind of how it looked sitting out there, and you mm -hmm. said that you guys get a lot of um, people that are interested, especially if they're out for, you know, sporting events or mm -hmm. um, White Bear Township days, whatever, it's hard not to look across the parking lot and see that there. You get a lot of people wandering over to see what's going mm -hmm. on. There's tremendous curiosity and that park is amazingly busy. 
So it's, it's just kind of fun to take advantage of that. It was one of those things where we weren't sure where to put the building in the park. That took a lot of process and decision making. Um, but where it sits, it's almost sort of capping the hill, if you will, and it's, it's just kind of got its own space and its own zone, and um, people wander by and check it out and ask a lot of questions and are incredibly curious. So it'll, again, we're just excited to be able to share it with people and get it open. Great, and we look so. forward to having more updates on in the future, yeah, and hopefully uh, I'm sure we'll be attending some sort of grand oh, reopening sure. someday, <laughs> uh, hopefully soon in the future. And uh, the other main thing we want to talk to about today is sitting right next to me here, this uh, <laughs> time capsule that you guys recently mm -hmm. opened. And uh, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, have you always been aware that this time capsule existed? We knew it was there. Um, when they did the project, when they built the WPA flagpole in 1939, or when they built the Soldiers Memorial flagpole in 1939, and then um, in the, they dedicated that in the fall, and then in the spring of 1940, the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, came out and constructed um, the base, the stone base around it. Uh, it was in the paper, it was covered, that they were putting a time capsule in. They didn't necessarily say what was in it, which was kind of fun, um, but they we knew it would become air that there was one in there. Now I will say when the construction crew went out to work on the restoration project and one of the first things they wanted to do was get the time capsule out so they didn't wreck it or anything, uh, they went where it was described to be behind the date stone and there was nothing there. And they kind of panicked, you know, it's a, you never know with these things. Um, fortunately they figured out fairly quickly that there was a cement barrier, there was sort of a cement um, wall that was protecting it a little bit more and they were able to get it out of there and, uh, and then brought it and give it to us to play with and figure out how to get it open and, and make some fun with it. And again, for those who aren't familiar, where exactly was it located? Uh, it was in the, the stone base of the um, flagpole, the Soldiers Memorial flagpole, which sits right on the edge of Highway 61, directly across from the depot in downtown Wiper Lake. So it was, uh, when it was constructed, the what is now Premier Bank building was the post office, and it was brand new, just being completed itself. And then um, the park was still there, at, you know, at that point. Uh, so it was a very prominent, uh, kind of in the middle of town location. So I imagine, you know, once <clears throat> you, you know, had possession of it, there had to be some considerations to <laughs> exactly how you're going to open it, so you don't potentially damage anything inside. Right. Well, and and of course, not knowing what's inside, you know, there were a lot of interesting discussions about you know, what if somebody put a grenade in because it's a military, it's a veterans thing or whatever. It's like, why would they do that? <laughs> um, and I was a little bit worried because we've opened other time capsules in the past and usually you can feel stuff shifting around in there if you move it or it's, it, it, you can just kind of, it's like a Christmas gift. You know, you shake it or, and see what's what. Um, this, nothing moved. I mean, it was, sounded like a granule, of, gran, a granule of salt maybe rolled around or something. Um, but the, uh, and it wasn't heavy. So it scared me a little bit. I thought, well, are we going to have a Geraldo Rivera, you know, Al Capone's vault moment? Um, so we were a little bit nervous going into the completely unknown, um, but we got Public Works uh, with the city involved, and they went um, and were willing to cut it for us after much debate on how to best do that. Uh, and we were happy. I, w I was thrilled. We did the pre-cut, or the pre-open, um, as you know, and got to actually see that there was, you could see white inside. You could see that there was something in there. So that made me feel a little bit better. <laughs> That's as far as we could see, and then made them seal it all. Yeah, and we, I believe, have some footage of that. And then you, um, I believe, handed it over. <laughs> Was it to the mayor? Did she take it? Well, we actually had the police chief there. Oh, okay. um, Julie Swanson was there to uh, put evidence tape on it to make sure it was sealed shut because we're all incredibly nosy and impatient. And after debating for several weeks on what could be in it, you know, we really wanted to look. Um, but we wanted to unveil it and really do the reveal publicly and, and do that as part of our Market Fest event. So um, we had the evidence tape put on, the mayor signed it so that we could not break that seal and fake it, uh, and then handed it over to the chief to put into an evidence locker until she brought it back to Market Fest a couple days later. And then at that Market Fest is when you officially exactly. examined what was inside? Yep, we do the second week of Market Fest each year, we do a history theme night, and so we kind of take over 4th Street, if you will, with our timeline and our cakewalk and exhibits and booths and things. And so at the end of the cakewalk, we decided usually there's a crowd around that evening, and so we gathered everybody around the barricades from the cakewalk and were able to do it. And again, it, it's an interesting thing. I usually like to plan things fairly well and, and don't like to deal with uncertainty or unknowns. Um, so I was a little bit worried. Uh, in fact, there's one photograph I think that popped up that there's a look of relief on my face as we opened it and realized there was something inside. <laughs> so it's important. Um, it was not a, it was about this thick. I mean, it was, certainly didn't take up the whole box by any means. So that was an interesting piece. 
Well, and you said exactly what I was thinking. I remember as a child, my whole family gathered around the TV watching the Geraldo uh -huh. thing with the <laughs> alcohol and thoughts, and I'm sure that runs through your mind. Oh, yes. That there's like nothing in there, just a little dust. But Extremely um, anticlimactic at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what exactly w was in there then? Um, so the, the flagpole project in 1939 and 1940 was really spearheaded by Warren Stickley, who was the publisher of the Weber Press at the time. And so not surprisingly, I mean, it, I have never, we had people guessing what was going to be in it to begin with. And um, I've never seen a flag, or I'm sorry, I've never seen a time capsule that doesn't have copies of the local newspaper. So that was not a surprise. There were actually five issues detailing the project. What was kind of cool was um, one of the issues had a note from Stickley on the top, a handwritten note on the top about the fact that the paper, of course, was being printed one day and the ta time capsule wasn't being buried till the next day and, and you know, kind of making it clear that they had to pre-write the story, if you will. Um, there was also a letter from Stickley which was a little bit eerie. It was, he it was wonderful. It was, of course, he was a wonderful writer, but it, was, it described why he cared about the project and why he wanted to see all of this done and why it was important and how they got it done. But it also had a few comments about, you know, it, it was literally addressed to those who read this in the future or something along those lines, which gives you a little bit of pause. And again, without having pre-read anything, I opened this and started reading it that night. Um, and it goes on and on about, uh, if you think about the events of the world in 1940, the spring of 1940. Um, world War II was uh, taking shape in, in Europe, and of course we weren't there yet, but close. I mean, things were pretty uncertain and pretty ugly. Um, and so his comments alluded to the fact that, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, and we don't know what it'll be like when this is opened in the future, and, um, you know, which is interesting because things are fairly uncertain right now <laughs> in our world. So it was kind of, it gave me a little bit of chill. <laughs> yeah. I think though sometimes that's helpful to remember that, you know, especially even Absolutely. for younger people that, you know, it's not like this is totally a new thing when there's no. uncertainty, you know, even whether it's just in our country or on a global scale. Mm -hmm. but We've weathered storms before and hopefully yeah. we'll do the same, you know, so. But it was, it was just interesting. It seemed very insightful at the time, so. So overall, you know, where you, you know, Obviously, you were pleased in the sense that there was something in there, but you know, was there? Were <laughs> yes. you hoping for more, or were you pretty happy with? No, what I, I was pretty happy. I think the letter sort of put it over the top. Um, the other stuff was somewhat predictable from what we've seen in the past. There were photographs of, of the mayor at the time, and, and a couple others, Stickley and, and another gentleman who were involved in the campaign. Um, there were the the newspapers, and, and then very common at that time in particular were um, lists of members of organizations, the veterans organizations, and things. And so that was pretty common and all of that has then been archived in um, our into our collections which is kind of fun so we, those will all be kept safe and and uh, have been scanned so that the, and are on our website actually wiperhistory.org so people can see the contents of what was there so is this something had they put a date you know that they had hoped somebody would open it or was it just kind of hey, no. sometime in the future just kind of open ended there was no you know don't forget to do this 50 years from now or mm -hmm. whatever um, which is kind of exciting too and, there are a lot of time capsules around town, which is kind of interesting. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> are there other ones that you're aware of? Then? There are. There, you know, for a certain period of time, and, and there was a lot of building going on at that point. It was a very common thing to do. Um, so it's it's been interesting. We've kind of started brainstorming. Where else would they be? <laughs> we actually uh, here at Suburban Community, Community Channels have one out back. Um, I don't forget how many years ago it was that we put it back there. Uh, but not to spoil the surprise, right. but I know there are some DVDs in there. We even sure. joked at the time that who knows how many right. years from now somebody opens up, they might have no use or way to even sure. uh, view them, or hopefully things actually um, are in decent condition that they don't get ruined by That's the hard part. water. And, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's making this stuff last. And then paper, you know, I'll, I'll stand by the fact that paper is always transferable yeah. or always usable, which is, which is a good thing, but it doesn't stay well. Yeah. I mean, if moisture gets in there, you're done. So. Unfortunately, we're running short on time here, but you mentioned that if people uh, want to get a look at these documents, they can go to your website? Absolutely. They're all scanned and online um, on the website and uh, available. We also have this, a copy of the book that we printed out of, of all the things that we have at Market Fest um, mm -hmm. each, and we'll have that again in 2019, I'm sure, because it's been a popular feature. And you said it's whitebearhistory.org. Mm -hmm. And I know people can also find out the, all the other exciting events you guys are always Absolutely. doing. And There's always something going always on. Always something going on. <laughs> I know you have a Facebook page too that has great info. So uh, uh, that's awesome. And yeah, we encourage people to check it out. And I'm sure we'll be talking with you again soon about uh, some other exciting <laughs> uh, historical things you guys are working on. Always happy to come back. So. Uh, thanks Thank so you. much. And it's time for a short break. We'll be right back with more of Northeast Journal in just a minute. 
Check that smooth backside. No, really, check it. When detected early, skin cancer is highly treatable. Learn more about what to look for at spotskincancer.org. Welcome back to Northeast Journal. The month of August can only mean one thing. It's time for Heritage Days in Vadnais Heights. Today I'm joined in the studio by Vadnais Heights Recreation Supervisor Bridget Nault and Summer Recreation Assistant Ray Johannesson to learn more about this popular annual community festival. I want to thank you both so much for uh, coming here today. And Thanks for inviting Thanks for having us. us. And I hope I got your last name right. Yes. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> and. Um, you know, we have you on, I think, every year, Bridget. Usually you bring somebody with you. And uh, But for people maybe who are new to the area, um, can you kind of tell us exactly what is Heritage Days? Sure. Well, this is our 43rd year, and it is a wonderful celebration of community. Um, people get together who've lived in Vadnais before and now don't live there any longer, and people um, in the surrounding communities come in addition to Vadnais Heights residents. And we have something for everyone. We have a senior picnic and we've got a kiddie parade and everything in between. Um, so um, a good chance to meet some new people and um, enjoy people you already know. And we have just fun, fun activities and, and great food, um, pig roast, booyah, and um, every year it's a little different, but every year you'll see many of the same things. Yeah, I know um, I have a list here. There's just so many events, and of course one of the popular ones is the uh, parade, which um, Suburban Community Channels, where we're at right now, we provide coverage of that every year. And I understand you have some exciting uh, grand marshals of the parade this year. Yeah, we're very excited about having the Brant sisters, who um, were just recently in the Olympics, and um, Hannah being on the USA team, and they won um, USA. And then also Marissa being on the Korean team, and um, quite exciting and historical combination of North Korea and South Korea. Um, really what the Olympics is all about in terms of um, international um, togetherness and we're all on this planet together. So um, very, very exciting and they're homegrown. They grew up in Vadnais and um, used to skate at our community park ice rink and um, look at them today. So, um, and very proud parents and um, just a, a joy to have in our community. And the warming house is named after, and the rink is named after the Brandt sisters. So um, once again, to celebrate that this unique um, um, history of our community, so. And I know they're both uh, really busy, so I'm sure to yeah. be able to get them for this was, yeah. was great for the city. And really fantastic. Now, Ray, I understand you've been, you know, working with the city for the summer. What are some of the duties and some of the things you've been doing uh, working with Heritage Days? Yeah, um, I've been working a lot with the senior picnic, registering people for that and getting things ready, as well as the kitty parade that we're excited about in Her during Heritage Days. And then um, working a lot with the parades, the registrations for people. And I'm really excited for Heritage Days. I've never attended it, and I'm super excited um, with everything we have to see, see what it's all about. I understand, you know, you're college students. Is this something you're hoping to go into, kind of working in yeah. parks and recreation? Yes, yeah, it's something I'm really interested in. Um, I like working with kids and with people, so, yeah, it's been a lot of fun this summer. I'm sure there's uh, no shortage of things to keep you busy. Because oh, no. a lo lot of work goes into <laughs> putting on this festival every yes. year. Yes, <laughs> a lot of work, but a lot of fun, yeah. yeah. She Fun was in work. charge last night of our movie in the park. And in the, pa in the past three years, we had it part of Heritage Days, and we decided this year to have it be a standalone event. And she was in charge last night, and it went very, very nicely. So. Oh, good. I'm sure you're probably a little nervous some of the weather throughout <laughs> yes, the day. Yes, we got lucky with the weather. Perfect. Yes, it was good. Yeah, Cleared seemed, up, cool enough. Seems like every year those are becoming more and more popular, and people bringing the kids out for that. And yeah. Um, was, was it Coco was the yes, movie? Yes, yeah, it was that's Coco. a really popular movie, so I'm sure that was well yeah. attended. And, yes, the kids uh, liked it. Great, I'm glad, glad you had some good weather. And uh, what are some other exciting things that people are going to find at Heritage Days this year? Well, we have Kat Perkins from The Voice, and she'll be singing um, on Sunday afternoon after the parade. And first is going to be the um, performing children's performing arts 
um, show choir that will be performing first and one number with Cat Perkins. So the, the kids are real excited to perform with Cat. And we also have, um, uh, let's see, Hornycopia um, is going to be performing Saturday night um, before the 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 fireworks and after the fireworks and then we also have the wildcat combo band who i think they did um, market fest and manito days and they're a great local band so um yeah and other things we're doing the beanbag tournament softball tournament um the fire department um water ball tournament booyah of course is extremely popular and um, so they're going to do another great job this year. So um, that's a highlight for many, many people. So. I know there's always the risk of it selling out. So yeah. it's always good if you're wanting to get there plenty early like enough. Like 8 a.m. <laughs> it's really delicious. And there's a difference between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. You know, it, it cooks longer. So. It, at 8 a.m. you taste the spices more, so it's quite good. So I've had it both both ways. And I'm always amazed, you know, we're always set up there Sunday morning for the parade, and I remember, especially my first year, was doing it, wondering why people were walking by with pots and pans and containers and not realizing that people are getting extra and bringing it home and sometimes even freezing it or yeah, saving it for later. It's a phenomenal um, um, activity and event, so. And I know besides the booyah, there's plenty of other great food, too. Yeah, and then we also have um, inflatables for the kids, both Saturday and Sunday. Um, the Lions Club are doing, um, this year they're doing something different. They're going to have two face painters, and they're going to do uh, colored hair spraying, and that'll be free um, right after the kitty parade on Saturday. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things. Any any other things you wanted to add or? Um, well, no, the uh, senior picnic. To get back to that, um, I believe you're having some entertainment with that with uh, the Gary Larue, mm -hmm. local yep. uh, singer who does kind of yep. Sinatra yeah. and Rat Pack type songs, which I'm yeah, sure he's will go over really well with the yes. seniors. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really always good. always a fun event. So it sounds like it's not too hard to convince seniors to come out for this <laughs> nope. event, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll have bingo and bingo yeah. prizes, which will be good. Yeah, she j she um, just wrapped all the bingo prizes. <laughs> but like so. Christmas <laughs> in August, <laughs> in July. Has, has there been anything so far that surprised you about you know the amount of work that goes into an event like this? Yeah, I think when you when I have attended them, always um, it just it's so fun, and you don't really think about all the all the behind the scenes that goes into it, which is also a lot of fun to be able to see that side of it, but I've never really considered how much there is. And, you know, two other things, um, we re uh, definitely want to thank all the donors that support Heritage Days, the city, um, you know, they make it possible. Um, and then also, um, the people that help promote it, including cable TV and press publication and the newspapers and free, we have free freeway sign notifications and the businesses in town that put Heritage Days on their marquees and we just get a lot of support for this event and um, it's going to go on for many, many years because um, it's, it's enjoyed by so many and supported by so many. And of course, another popular uh, part of Heritage Days is always the uh, medallion hunt. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris Gillette, she's um, our person in charge of the Adult Softball League, and it was her idea to start, and she's on the Heritage Days committee, and she, um, it was her idea to start the medallion hunt, and I said, we can do it if you do it. <laughs> and every year she just enjoys coming up with all the clues, and you know, every year it's fun to see Premier Bank sponsors it and they give the $200 donation um, to that. And um, the winners are always very happy once they find it and bring it to City Hall and cash in. So, um, yeah. I'm sure it's excitement, not only obviously the, the uh, hunt. money is fun, but the hunt and being yeah. the one to figure out clues yeah. and everything. Yeah, There's... she does really a great job and it's fun to see all the different groups. Um, looking around the community, so, and usually it's at a park um, where it's, you know, hidden, so. Sure. 
and I understand the dates again are August 16th and then the 18th through the 19th. The uh, Thursday 16th you have the picnic, a water ski show, and the beginning of the medallion hunt, and then. Um, or actually, the medallion hunt begins earlier in the Monday, week, yeah. and then of course the weekend, the 18th and 19th, are uh, just chock full of events. And if people want more information, I imagine they can go, go to, to the, the website. website. And we, we're on Facebook, and uh, Ray has been updating the Facebook yeah. page, and um, we're also on Twitter. And um, and they can call, stop by City Hall. Um, we're welcome. You know, we welcome everyone um, to attend and welcome all phone calls about the event. So I should add that website is cityvadnessheights.com, and yeah. people can navigate from there to find out more and information. If they want to go to the senior picnic. The important thing is you have to pre-register um, because we only have so many seats, and um, so one week before. The event, so it's on the 16th, so it would be one week before the 16th. So. I'm sure you'll be still busy yeah. with that right <laughs> up until then. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Anything else the two of you care to add before we wrap up here? No, we're just looking forward to another yeah. successful and hopefully dry yeah. and mm -hmm. relatively cool mm -hmm. um, <laughs> event, but Mother Nature has the last mm -hmm. say in yeah. that one. Yeah. Well, it seems like the amount of years I've been uh, helping out at the parade, it seems like most years we usually luck out and it ends mm -hmm. up being pretty nice. So yeah. we'll hope for some beautiful weather again. Absolutely. Yes. And I uh, add again that people can uh, see uh, replays of the parade here on our channel. Yes. And um, you know, we always look forward to doing that. It's always yeah, a fun parade with a lot of variety and um, mm -hmm. you know, there's always some new things with some of the old favorites usually mm -hmm. in the parade as well. So yeah, look definitely. forward to that. That again is on Sunday morning or right around noon is yeah. the parade. Great. Well, thank both of you for stopping by, and thank I know you. how fast time goes. Before you know it, we'll probably be having you back to talk about next year's <laughs> yep. Heritage Days. Yep. <laughs> and we're almost out of time on this month's show, but first, we recently visited a new event center in White Bear Lake that is proving to be a popular place to hold weddings and receptions. Here's the Charleston Event Center. Our tagline is Southern Charm, Midwest Flair. We kind of bring in those southern elements with obviously the colonial, the brick and the columns, the shutters, the wrought iron, and then just that Midwest flair with the exposed ceilings and kind of the Minnesota stone that's on the veranda. I think we're trying to pull all those things together and you get that really unique vibe between the mashup of the two. When we bought the building, we knew that we would have to do something extensive on the back. Um, having the pond right on site, we knew it would lend for very great pictures. Um, the ambiance of being outside, we are you know, in the suburbs. We're right off the, in the freeway, so I think it's nice that they, we're kind of this little oasis. We've got the pond, so it feels like you're up north, but you're really local. The brides love the bridal suite. That it takes the breath away when they walk in. I think it seals the deal. Um, when they bring their parents back to see it, the parents are totally enamored with the veranda feels peaceful and quiet and really just a nice relax. They can imagine a nice relaxing day. The thing that I'm the proudest of is taking an empty building and turning it into something just beautiful and something that um, will last in people's minds. It's their wedding day. That's a really special thing to be part of. That's all we have time for on this month's show. Thanks for tuning in and join us again next month for another edition of Northeast Journal.